Boxing King Media in association with Box Row, Matt Macklin. How excited are you for this fight? Yeah, I am. It's, it's, it's obviously very different to last week. You know, there was more, there was a lot of needle in the build up last week, Ami Karnako, but because it had been uh, talked about for so long and it was such a huge fight and they're both really big names. I mean, this is very different. It's, it's more low key, but actually, in the significance of the current boxing world, this is a bigger fight. This is the undisputed. Uh, world champion, super lightweight champion, fighting his mandatory challenger. So in, in that, you know, two guys in their peak, in their pump, where, you know, last week was a massive event. And because of the profile of both guys and being household names and everything like that, it, it, you know, the casual, the, the, the guys who never watched, probably watched two boxing fights a year knew they were fighting, bought into that, where this is a lot more for the people who are actually really boxing fans, more for the, the hardcore, the purists. And I think it'll probably be that type of fight as well. I don't expect it to be uh, on the fight of the year uh, list of you know candidates uh, at the end of the year for the, the a nominee for the fight of the year. I don't expect it to be that type of fight, but I think it'll be a good fight. You've got two very technically sound, southpaw, clever boxers. Um, but Josh Taylor's got that bit of fire in his belly too. And, you know, Jack Cattrall will know he can't run away. He'll have to get his respect. So he might meet him at certain points of the fight. So I, th I think it'll be a good fight. Uh, I think Taylor's obviously a strong favourite because he's proven at that level. But as Jamie Moore said, you only step up to the level by stepping up to the level. At some point, anyone who's up there stepped up to the level. So... Look, they're, they're confident, they're quietly uh, confident. Um, they know how good he is, they've seen him in the gym, they're, they think his level's above where he's been performing, and they, and they think this is the right time for him. Uh, time will tell, we'll, we'll know soon in a couple of days. Obviously, towards the end of your career, obviously, you know, weight making is probably one of the hardest things to do in boxing. I was looking up earlier, Jack hasn't actually made super lightweight for about three, four years. Will that be a key factor in this fight, do you think? I don't think so. I think, I think he's a... He's a 140-pounder. I don't think he's there's ever been talk of him moving up to Wales. I've never really heard of him massively struggling. Do you know what I mean? I think there's. I think he was comfortably uh, always inside the limit. You know, he, I don't think he'd have made lightweight. I think he, he is a super lightweight, but I don't think there was ever any. There's never ever. I've never heard any talk of him struggling badly or any talk of him moving up in weight. And motivation, again, motivation is key for fighters. Obviously, Jack, uh, Jack, Josh has got so many potential fights on the horizon. You know, Crawford. You know, he could go up to welterweight fight anyone. How much of an impact do you reckon that has playing on his mind? You know, with Jack Cattrall, obviously, he's probably expecting it to be an easy fight. Um, tell me how a fighter deals with that. No, I think I think one of the biggest fears or dangers for Josh Taylor is that he uh, he looks past this. I mean. He shut that down, didn't he, when they said, what about Terence Crawford? And he shut it down. He said, there's no talk of Crawford. This is Jack Cattrall. I'm fighting Jack Cattrall on a Saturday night. And, you know, if I don't beat Jack Cattrall, there is no Terence Crawford. There is no other one. So I don't even want to talk about it or get into it because what happens is it, it moves your focus. And because we're human, you know what I mean? And it takes your focus away, what you need to be focusing on, which is Jack Cattrall. And that's right because, you know, Jack, this isn't a voluntary defence. This is a mandatory. He, he, he's earned this shot. Uh, he's undefeated. Lots of guys say he's better than we've ever seen, but he's only ever had to be a certain level. So all of, you know, he's a strong favourite right now, Josh Taylor. And let's say Cattrall's boxed at this level and look good at this level. Um, let's say he's got a few more levels in him. You know, if Josh Taylor comes down a couple of levels because he's thinking about Terence Crawford or maybe Teofimo Lopez or whatever, and he underperforms a bit, what what was a sizable gap of levels? Or, you know, there was there was a difference in levels. All of a sudden, that gap closes. So, look, it happens all the time in sport, in, in boxing. You know, people take your eye off the ball or you, you look past it or you get a little bit complacent. We were talking earlier about it. I said complacency is probably the hardest thing to guard against because it creeps in subconsciously you you, you, you don't realize it's happening um, it's not like you know sometimes people think oh you look past him or they took it easy or they feel like these guys didn't train or something you know <laughs> you know or you should be professional of course you're professional of course you trained as hard of course you went to the gym and sparred the same amount of rounds but you, you you're also human you're professional but you're human and it's hard to fake a fear. You know, when, you know, fight week with Ramirez where people, 
you're reading things and you're doing interviews and people are picking Ramirez to beat him and then some people will be picking Ramirez to stop him and knock him out and then some people will pick you and all that and all of a sudden you 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 know this is a 50-50 fight there's a lot of people think you're going to get beaten that puts a little bit of fear inside you and, and when that fear is inside you your focus is laser and you're sharp because you're on it you know there's probably no one picking Jack Cattrall to beat Josh Taylor this week 7 to 1 he is he's 7 to 1 Everyone's talking, even though he's shooting it down, people are asking him about Terence Crawford. You know, he's human, you know what I mean? So he, he, he's, um, that's, I, I think, you know, that that's Ben Davison. You're thinking we've worked hard, we've trained hard, everything's going well. Uh, we've done all we can do. Now your biggest fear, fight week, is, is, is that focus slip or if you lose focus or complacency creeps in that week, that's, that'd be your biggest fear as a trainer. Moving on from this, a certain middleweight wasn't happy with certain things you've said during your commentary stint recently. You've been tempted to come out of retirement and settle it in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> it was a few years younger, maybe, not now. Um, I look, every. He, um, I, it, look, it was. I thought he threw. I stand by my card. You know, maybe, maybe I could have been a round or two max. A little bit wide, possibly, but the, but I did say there was a couple of razor thin uh, rounds there, which I didn't give to you, Bank, because he didn't do anything. I could have given them to him, I suppose. Like there was nothing in it. It was a toss of a coin. There could have been ten ten rounds, really. But in that, in those ten ten razor close rounds, you know. I went to Williams because he pursued it, he pushed it, he tried, even though he was missing with a lot, he was making the fight, he was trying to fight. Eubank ran and showboated, you know, for me that doesn't win a round. You know, like, and I said that to him, I said, you know, punches landed win rounds, showboating doesn't. Looking the part doesn't win rounds. Look, he never looked in trouble of losing the fight, he was way ahead on the cards, he scored the knockdowns. And he coasted, he probably felt he was so in charge and, and probably wasn't feeling like he was getting dominated or hit or anything. So, like I say, he threw those rounds away just by doing nothing. I didn't think he was like, it wasn't so much that, uh, you know, like he, it wasn't like he was getting beaten in those middle rounds by, by anything. He just wasn't doing anything and I didn't think he was doing enough to win the rounds. When you saw that uh, Instagram post, what was your first reaction? Were you pissed off or were you thinking, well, like, let me get back to this guy? Uh, I don't get pissed off. Any, you know, it's, uh, Did he DM you or was it just no, a, post? It was a public tweet? So I, don't, I wouldn't normally go back, but he tweeted, he included me into the tweet, and I thought, no, I'll go back at that, you know, because that's, that's how you're looking at it, but this is how I've seen it. You know, you, you, you threw away a lot of rat, and, and you could tell by the amount of people that jumped on it. You know, listen, loads, loads agreed with him, by the way, but I think even more agreed with me. So it, what that shows you is it was open to debate and you shouldn't have let it open to debate. After those, after that start you had, you should have put your foot on the gas, you should have gone through the gears and you should have made a statement. Instead, you took your foot off the gas and just coasted and, in my opinion, threw away a lot of those middle rounds. To finalise that particular debate, a prime Matt Macklin versus a Chris Eubank Jr., what would have happened? <laughs> <laughs> you knew that was coming. Listen, I, I proved myself. I didn't, I didn't shy away. I didn't lose my pen when it comes to signing contracts with Golovkin. And he, you know, I had one round in 15 months. He'd had two fights that year. And that's when Golovkin was Golovkin. You know, so, listen, we'll never know. <laughs> we'll never know. We're going to leave it on that note, Matt. Thank you for your time. Cheers. Cheers.